Hello, my name is Dan Hampson. Welcome to my video showing you the application of our new program LithOSI within the HRS9 suite. In this video, I'm going to show you the application of the software, not the theory behind LithOSI. There's an accompanying video which I encourage you to watch, uh, which describes the theory of LithOSI. So I've got the program GeoView started up in HRS9 and the data has already been loaded. If you're unfamiliar with the details of how to load data into GeoView, there's also another accompanying video that will show you that. The data that's loaded is, uh, can most easily be seen if I look at the project manager area. Now, under the project manager, I have a well tab which shows that there are two wells loaded, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, there's seismic data. There are two seismic volumes which have been loaded and they're actually appearing here on the middle. One of them is VPVS ratio and the other one is P impedance. Both of these have been calculated in a previous run of simultaneous inversion of pre-stack data. So simultaneous inversion is always a prerequisite to be done before applying LithOSI. Uh, looking in the middle section, we see the uh, Acoustic impedance ZP in the middle here on the left hand pane and a, a VPVS ratio on the right. There are two wells which are uh, located within the data sets. One of them is the, showing right now is the gas well, and if I pull the slider along, we can see a wet well off to the edge here. Getting another look at the wells, I go to the tabs. There's, I'm right now on the seismic tab. If I go to the wells tab, I see the two wells displayed. Uh, the gas well on the left and the wet well on the right. Each of these wells has a series of curves, sonic log, P wave, shear wave velocity, density, uh, VPVS ratio, and the same thing for the wet well. The biggest difference, in fact, is here at the zone of interest on the VPVS ratio, and if I uh, zoom a little of each of these, we can see that there's a drop in VPVS ratio exactly within the gas sand on the, the uh, gas well, if I zoom the wet well, we see that the drop is less significant. So that's the difference between the two wells. So I've got uh, the seismic data loaded and the wells loaded. Theoretically, in order to do um, LithOSI, I also need one more log curve, and that is a lithology log. A lithology log is a curve that's number coded according to lithology, say sand, gas sand, shale, etc. Typically, this is created by a petrophysicist before the LithOSI project. However, I'm going to show you another way to create it, and I'll do that using a cross plot. So to uh, accomplish that, I go over to the Process tab, and this is the list of all the processes available within HRS9. Um, the one I'm interested in is cross plotting and cross plot logs. So I double click cross plot logs, and the menu appears over on the right. So on this menu, I'm going to choose to use multiple wells and do them all. Then I'm going to make not a general cross plot, but a cross plot of VPVS versus P impedance, because these are the two litho, um, stratigraphic volumes which I've created in the previous run of simultaneous inversion. I need to set a window, and I'll use a, a window between two targets uh, from a constant of 600 meters to 700 meters and I say OK, and the cross plot appears. Now the cross plot is showing me VPVS ratio on the vertical axis, P impedance on the horizontal axis, calculated from the two well logs. Um, we can see clusters, and in fact, if I highlight and create a zone, I click the polygon, and I start clicking, I can create the first zone. And I know that this actually corresponds to the gas sand because it's on a low value of VPVS ratio, a low value of acoustic impedance. Let's call it the gas zone. It's another way that I can see where this comes from is to use what's called the cross section. The cross section uh, allows me to see the zone propagated to the well logs themselves. So this is very convenient. So what we're seeing here on this little display is once again the log curves of P impedance and VPVS ratio for the gas well in the first two, P impedance and, and VPVS ratio for the wet well on the second two, and we see that the zone appears precisely on the gas well at the zone of interest. So that means that I've created a reasonable zone for the gas area. 
Uh, I can see two other clusters. I don't know what they are, but I'll highlight them. And this one will just leave with the name Zone 2. And uh, let's make one here, which we'll call Zone 3. So uh, when I go back to my display, I can see that the, the regions from the logs, the wells in which these zones occur. The purpose of making the cross plot was to, for me to automatically and easily create the lithology logs for these wells. So to do that, I go to log processing, log transform, lithology, create curb of cross plot zones. And so once again, I see a menu that looks like this. Uh, I'll use multiple wells. Both of the wells will be used and there's, it's going to use the cross plot zones created in my cross plot called cross plot and all the rest is automatically filled in. I'm going to create a new curve called lithology trans, which is going to be the, the lithology curve that is created from these cross plot zones in each of the wells. So I say okay, and it's done. Uh, I can see that displayed in the wells tab. For example, if I go to the wet well, there's the lithology curve uh, created for the, the wet well over there. Another way to see the lithology curve is to go to the Data Explorer, and if I pick one like the gas well, I see I've created a lithology trans curve, and it has a series of numbers corresponding to the zones that I uh, created. So now I've got all my data ready, and the next step and final step is to actually do the lithology analysis. So I go back to my process list. At the bottom is species classification, litho SI, new session. And what comes up is a menu, a multi-tab menu, which is a wizard which allows me to organize all the data for the process. So the first thing is I'll create a new super volume called litho SI input, which is a, a super volume is our name for a collection of seismic volumes all used together. So it includes ZP and VPVS ratio uh, as the seismic volumes. Then I go to the wells and I choose both wells. Then I go to facies classification. What is the lithology log? Well, I just created a lithology log called lithology trans. It would like to know how these lithologies are organized. In other words, what colors correspond to which zones. The easiest way for me to set that up is to use an existing cross plot zone set that I've just created. So I call cross plot and it automatically knows that the number one in the lithology log corresponds to the gas zone, the number two is zone two, and the number three is zone three with these colors. And finally, seismic attributes, I tell the program I'm using two seismic attributes, those are the inversion outputs. The first one is ZP or P impedance and that corresponds to the log curve P impedance trans. And BPVS seismic volume corresponds to the log curve uh, BPVS ratio trans. So I've set everything up now, I say OK, and the uh, litho SI interface appears. There's a series of tabs, uh, and a lot of this is showing me the information I've just put in, which I can override if I want. One thing is to, uh, there's a, a lot of detail on the screen, so I can temporarily get rid of the project manager to create more space. Notice that I can always bring it back just by clicking the name on the left. So going from left to right, we have parameters that we've already input, like there are two attributes, the mapping of uh, the seismic volume to the well log curves, number of traces around the wells. It's going to do the analysis using composite traces. I'll extract, say, two traces around the well to do the uh, training data, the training. Uh, there's information about the uh, well, which wells are used and which classes are, I'm using. And finally, there's something here which allows me to compute the probability distributions, I'll come back to that in a minute. On the right, there's other information which is also has been set up using the wizard uh, in the previous step. Uh, one thing that's of note is the prior distributions. This has been calculated looking at the well logs themselves, looking at all the wells, and it found, for example, that the prior probability of gas is 1.11%, meaning that the number of sa sa uh, samples in the training data, which were gas, were 1%, 12%, and 86% for the other zones. I could overwrite these if I didn't want to take them from the wells. Uh, moving from data selection to kernel analysis, this is where we now get a repeat of the cross plot, but in a form that's going to allow me to interactively create the uh, probability distributions and edit them. So we see three uh, clusters, 
In fact, this is from the well logs. I could choose to use what's called the upscaled logs instead. The upscaled logs are the resampled logs of the seismic sample rate. The actual well logs are at the depth sample rate. Or I could use the composite trace itself. Typically, we use the well logs. Uh, it's nice to put the class legend on to remind myself what the colors mean. So, for, so the red is the gas sand, blue is zone 2, green is zone 3. Uh, I now would like to compute the probability distributions corresponding to them. The only parameter that I have strong control over is the, the, the smoother length, and if that is not clear to you at all, I invite you once again to see the accompanying theory video. But if I do compute, I get a redrawing of the crossplot now with probability curves associated with each of the parameters, uh, each of the classes. The black curve on the outside is a cutoff around which uh, no uh, calculation will be done. I can remove that temporarily because it, it, can, can, whoops, it can confuse the picture. Now, the, the parameter that controls the amount of smoothing and the distribution of curves is the smoothing parameter. If I make a much longer smoother and push recompute, you see the effect. So in fact, it is a gr very, very broad smoothing of the data. If I go to very, very small, I get a very tight clustering of uh, values around the, val the uh, crossplot points. So typically we set it in the middle. Another important diagnostic is the tab called QC at Wells. QC at Wells shows how well the prediction is doing compared to the actual lithology log. So we see the two wells, gas well on the left, wet well on the right. And in each case we've got the actual lithology log on the left itself and the classified log, that is the result from applying Bayesian classification to the seismic traces and the comparison. The fact that they're not exactly identical indicates that it's an imperfect result, although very good in this case. Most noticeably, we can see the gas sand has been well predicted and there's no strong prediction of gas outside. The wet well shows no prediction of gas sand. The result is summarized in what's called the confusion or confidence matrix, where we now say that if it is a gas zone, we 100% predicted gas and we never predicted otherwise. If it's zone 3, for example, we have a marginal possibility of predicting gas in there. So this is a very positive result. This uh, valid cross-validation is affected by my choice of smoother. If I make the smoother much smaller and recompute, we see a changed picture. In fact, less probability of getting the gas just right. So we'll put it back to the middle, and very often we would fine-tune the smoothing parameter by studying the cross-validation. The other interesting QC is the QC on sections. So the QC on sections shows the application of the Bayesian uh, calculation to the entire volume of seismic data. And once again, I can create more space by getting rid of one of the uh, menu uh, bars. Um, what we're seeing here is the actual classification result, where red is gas zone uh, sand, blue is zone 2, green is zone 3. So we see we have a very good prediction of gas sand precisely where it belongs. Uh, we can also see uh, some, uh, a probability. So this is the probability of gas, and so the probability is very high of gas precisely where the gas appears. The, there's another way of seeing that this is a, a, a very small QC display. The final result, result can be seen on the seismic volumes by saying run on 3D volume. So we, we're going to create new volumes with the prefix litho SI. We say run and when it's finished, it redraws the screen. And so now we're seeing as seismic volumes on the left, the facies result. Once again, gas zone is red, zone two is blue, zone three is green. And we see that we have a gas zone. And on the right is the probability. It happens to default to be the probability of zone three, but I can easily uh, click color data volume, gas zone probability, and we see the probability of gas sand. Of course, the high probability corresponds to low VPVS ratio, and it might be interesting to see that comparison. So one thing I can do is turn another view on, bring back the project manager, go to project data, and drag the VPVS ratio volume into view three. And so what we're seeing here is that where the VPVS ratio is low is precisely where we have a high probability of gas sand. We also notice on the left, all the SegY volumes have been created 
the probabilities, and the phase sheets volume. So because there are three classes, there are four volumes created by this process ready for any other analysis. So that's the overview of using LithOSI within uh, the HRS9 suite. Thank you for your attention.